listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Alive Again. My name is Brent Atwater, and I'm the host of the show, and we're going to do two segments today. In our first segment, we address a gray parrot. That's right, an African gray has medical problems. As Animal Medical Intuitive, we're going to look inside the birdie and find out what we see. But first, a word from our sponsors. We'll transport back into the metaphysical right after these earthly words from our sponsors. Buster, you're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition. I guarantee it. Petco, where the healthy pets go. Go to PetLifeRadio.com slash Petco and get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off hundreds of items at Petco. PetLifeRadio.com slash Petco. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Vacs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to PetLifeRadio.com forward slash Dyson. PetLifeRadio.com forward slash Dyson. To order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson. Music to your ears. Join us every week on Wings and Things, where you'll find real answers to real questions about everything you want to know about pet birds. Care, feeding, bird products, travel, and more. Everything to make your frequent flyer a happy camper. From parrots to parakeets, cockatiels to cockatoos, you'll have a bird's eye view of everything there is to know about your fun, feathered friends. We're your hosts, Barbara Heidenreich from Good Birding and Robin Schwokas from the Leather Elves. How do I learn more about my parrots? Spread your wings and get ready to fly. Wings and Things, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome, 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 and we hope you enjoyed what our sponsors say. Support those folks because they support our show. You're talking with Brent Atwater at Alive Again on Pet Life Radio. Now today... We have a question from Lynn, and she's asking about her African gray parrot, which uh, is a wild-caught parrot. And I think this will be a very interesting adventure for those avians out there. And if you have a question about your birdie, as they say, email brent at petliferadio.com, and we'll try to get to you. Now, remember, all of our questions are chosen at random, and uh, we have a big old fishbowl. We reach in there, and we pick your question out. So, we invite Lynn on the show. How are you today, Lynn? Oh, I'm doing great, Brent. Thank you for having me. Oh, we appreciate you sending a really interesting question, and tell us about Tobias. Okay, well, Tobias, I've had him about five and a half years. He is very special to me. He's had a tough life, you know, being wild-caught. All right, now I'd like you to teach the listeners out there the difference with a wild-caught parrot, because a lot of people don't know what that means. A wild-caught parrot is actually a parrot that was um, captured from the wild and, you know, imported here to the U.S. or wherever. Right. And sold, and generally... You know, they're abused during the process. A lot of them don't make it. And, yeah, it's awful. And Tobias was one of the lucky ones. He did make it. Um, and do they have laws against that now? Or do they only have to be uh, raised parrots that they don't allow wild caught anymore? Or do they still yeah. allow wild caught? Yes. Here we don't, uh, we don't take them, the wild caught parrots. I mean, uh, they stopped that back in see, 1984. That's what I thought. Uh, I'd know, seen a lot. It's illegal of... now. Now, you know, there's poaching out there. Oh, wow. Well. People are doing it illegally. Wow. So, okay. 
And that's how we kind of know Tobias's age. I did a little research on his um, his import band. He and is this like the little it. band you see the pigeons in the park wear? Yeah, they're little uh, round circle bands, and they're not closed. That's how you can tell it's a split band, and they're not flat. They're rounded like a donut. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. and they're, they're numbered. There's numbers on there. So, yes. And do you track, in other words, is that number like his little special bird identification driver's license? Yes, it it tells when the band was bought and where he was imported through, which for him it was California. And it doesn't give a lot of information, but I I did a lot of digging and um, found out that that band was bought in 1984, so he's... You know, and and we don't know how old he was when he was captured. And then he had a couple of brief homes and then um, ended up in the home with a couple for 15 years. He bit them on the first day. Big surprise. Uh, you think? So they were afraid of him. <laughs> so they locked him up in this cage for 15 years and fed him feed and water. And, now, wait a minute. Um, you, in other words, I know people keep African greys in cages. But when you say they locked him up, did they do a smaller cage than necessary? Because I know they're very active birds, and they need a larger cage than just a regular little parakeet size. They sure do. They're very intelligent birds, and they get uh, bored and stressed. They know yeah. what's going on. As this I understand, they're was, one of the smartest birds because that's why they're so popular, and they also are popular because of that intelligence level and their mimic ability. Oh, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. they're very intelligent. Every bird out there, I can guarantee you, know they know what's going on. They pay attention, even the little budgies. Um, some choose to talk and some don't, but they all know. They're, they are all intelligent. They're an intelligent animal. And the cage he was locked in was about, you know, 19 inches by 19 inches by maybe 24 inches tall. He couldn't even stretch his little wings or feetsies. Nope. So oh. he, a, a friend of mine who um, did bird rescue, all kinds yeah. of pet rescue, rescued him. And he plucked out every feather between that home and their home. So you had, had a never, naked bird. <laughs> yes. Anything he could reach was gone. Oh. So he had never had a human bird relationship with anybody. I mean, he had been just, you know, treated like a thing until... Let me ask him. a question. Since you are out there, and I'm sure all the bird lovers are asking, why would somebody keep an animal in a cage like that and just feed it if they didn't have any interrelationship with him? You know, I think part of it is, hey, look, I have a bird. I'm, I'm cool. And then I think as time goes on... They they love the animal to a degree, but they just, you know, it's kind of a mixture of things. Um, I, I think the woman had a hard time when um, my friend Laura went and her husband went and picked this bird up. You know, they mistreated him. They, bu- they bought another African gray and kind of teased Tobias by giving this other gray kisses and everything. Well, this was a captive bred African gray they brought in, and it was hand tamed so you know yeah he was a, a friendlier bird Tobias had been abused knew nothing but abuse and rough handling didn't know any love from people so he was scared that's why he bit them and I want to add this a minute I'm going to interrupt here you know a lot of people I want to say and if you listen to Lynn talk you can feel her love and her connection with this bird. And I want a lot of people out there to think about when you look at a bird, you think of a bird as a thing in a cage, as a visual. And from now on, when you look at a bird behind the cage, look at it as a living being that you can connect with rather than a visual entertainment for you. I feel like Lynn does in connecting with the birds. I had a cockatiel and I had several parakeets, which are, you know, not quite as smart as the uh, African greys. But I think that a lot of people have a tendency to just look at a bird and go, isn't it pretty, and walk on by. But right. since I am talking about alive again and reincarnated birds, because we had a bird that was electrocuted and was reincarnated as a cat. So birds do come back and do get reincarnated, even though we're focusing today on an animal medical intuitive issue with this bird. But look at birds and see them as more than visual entertainment behind bars. 
because literally they have souls. Their souls can reincarnate and they can create love bond relationships with a human being. Okay, yeah. Lynn, go ahead. Oh, yes, they can. And when my friend Laura, I don't know if I should mention last names. <laughs> nope. Um, okay. When she rescued him, took him home, within eight months, she managed to stick train him and gave him his first kiss, which is I have a picture of. And she talked about him to me by email and sent me pictures. And I would just sit there and cry about, you know, his life. And so you had a soul connection with him already. Mm-hmm. Go did, ahead. Yeah. You did. And so it was decided I adopted him eight months later. Within eight months, he was able to come here. And I didn't know what I was doing, of course. Well, now, how I did you find him? him? Now, just for those out there who are interested, do they have a gray parrot rescue? Um, I mean, can you go like... They, oh, you can find rescues everywhere online. They're all over. There and what so would it be under avians, or what would it be under? So, in other words, if there's yeah, a, our audience it would be out under there, bird rescue, avian rescue. Okay. There are so many. They're okay. in every state. Okay. There's not enough, but there's so many. You know, there's not enough of them around to take in all the birds that are given up. Well, we want to be sure that our listeners, if they are, want to have a bird and feel that they can do something good with a connection like that. And in today's economic times, it's a good thing to have because there's less going to the veterinarians, although we are going to talk about your bird's health issues. And there are also ways that you can, in a smaller apartment, keep a bird, whereas you might not be able to keep a dog or cat. So for those of you who are interested in having a pet that's not a dog or a cat, do look into the avian rescue groups. Go ahead. Oh, Definitely. They all have a story. They're all special. And, you know, a lot of them have issues, but they can be worked through. So Tobias, he's been here five and a half years. And about three years ago, I one of my cockatiels flew away. And I came home from work and changed my clothes. And I left to go look for this bird. And I didn't say hi to Tobias or any of my other birds. I was upset and I left. When I came home, a bunch of feathers were on the bottom of his cage. So that affected him. He, I had never done that to him before. I ignored him. Like It'd be like ignoring your child, <laughs> your older three-year-old. Then and I want to add or, something here. These birds are, because they have such a connection with humans, they do have a stress factor about the energy that they have with humans. Now, we're going to take a break for sponsors for just a minute, and then we're going to come right back and address Tobias's health issues. Thanks for listening, and see you on the other side of the sponsor. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetLifeRadio.com slash PetSmart and save up to 30% on toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetLifeRadio.com slash PetSmart today. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash Lucky, L-U-C-K-Y, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. 
Welcome to Bird's Eye View on Pet Life Radio. I am Dr. Lori Hess here with Dr. Michelle Ravish, and we are both bird and exotic animal veterinarians. We work at the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics, an all bird and exotic pet hospital in Bedford Hills, New York. And this is a show all about birds. It's a bird's eye view, and we hope you'll tune in soon. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. This is going to be an interesting discussion about birds, birds, and more birds. And we're talking with Lynn about her African gray Tobias. Tell us how many birds you have, Lynn. Uh, currently, I have 18. <laughs> now, that, folks, is a serious bird lover. Okay. So, tell us about your question, and we applaud you taking care of all those because Lynn is a bird rescuer, and I feel that she's obviously been led to do this, and she has soul connections with her birds. So, tell us about your baby, Tobias. Okay. Well, after that feather plucking day when I came home and ignored him, which he taught me something there, don't, don't do that. You know, I have feelings. Um, shortly after that, he didn't look right, and through lots of efforts with the vet and I and Tobias, um, we figured out eventually that he had a yeast and a bacterial infection. Okay, now here's a question because we try to make this a learning show. When you look at a bird and I look at a bird, you can say it doesn't look right, and I'm going to go, it's a bird, with a few exceptions. Now, what makes a bird look not right? Well, when when you um, have your bird and you see them on a daily basis, they have cer- they they do certain things. They look a certain way. They okay. have certain actions. They vocalize a certain way. Okay. They eat a certain amount. When you start noticing changes, like maybe they they they've eaten less. Um, okay. Maybe they're sitting on their perch, uh, both legs. Uh, attached to the perch, kind of mopey looking. Maybe their tails bobbing up and down, side to side, kind of heavily. They're breathing heavily. That could mean like a respiratory infection. Okay. Um, if they suddenly look, you know, depressed, um, like, the, you know, a lot of birds, when they're happy, they're sleeping, they'll lift one leg up and tuck it into their chest. They're happy okay. and content. When they start not doing that, uh, it, it's taking more energy for them to, um, you know, to perch. They're going to use both both legs. Oh, okay. Um, you may see them hiding behind toys, different things, vocalizing less. Like something's not okay. right. You might look at them and go, you know, something just, you just look different. It's a way, it's and, something a mommy knows. <laughs> yes, and, you know, it could be they're just having a bad day, and you know, and it's just a, a matter of watching them, or um, it could be stress, you know, what's been going on in the environment, are you reciting your house, as we did, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of banging, is there a lot of kids running around, maybe they're just stressed out and they need a day or two to, to get over that, they, okay. they can get stressed really easy if they're not used to things. So for him, he, uh, I noticed he was mopey and not eating his food. Okay. And uh, and then he began hiding behind things in his cage. So I knew now let me ask you wasn't. something: Are some birds like humans, or are some more gluttonous than others? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> birds are very smart, and they they will do things to get attention. I, I could go on. I have so many stories that I could tell about my birds and what they've done to get my attention. And, you know, sometimes you have to look at that in their personality. So, but, yeah. So some birds do eat more than other birds. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were asking something else. Yes. Okay. Even within the same, like, uh, two African greys may eat completely, you know, different amounts. Oh, okay. Um, I, I have one African grey that eats. He might eat 40 grams of food a day, and Tobias may eat 25 grams. Oh, okay. You know, it's their vibe on that. And it's their activity level, too. I think the more active birds need more fat in their diet, and they'll eat more. They'll go through a lot of food, like okay. the birds that fly. And then the more sedentary birds that, you know, perch potatoes may eat just as much, but they'll gain weight. Okay. 
but so yes, they all. I do. think sometimes I'm a perch potato. <laughs> I perch in my <laughs> office and eat those you Hershey's do. kisses. So it's like <laughs> Tobias and I are on the same page. We're perch potatoes at sometimes during the year. There are other times when I fly a lot, but you know, perch potatoing is a good thing in the winter. Yeah. Okay, I think so sometimes we need to do that. Yep. So we have um, with his yeast infection and bacterial. Tell me about that because you have really interesting, both of those are, when you give antibiotics, it strips the good bacteria out of your body and creates yeah. usually yeast and fungus. Exactly. So I'm sitting here going, if you're giving him antibiotics for bacterial infection, like with humans folks out there, you can also, when you give people antibiotics, you should give them probiotics and ask them to eat yogurt if they're tolerant to it so that they don't, you know, strip out their intestinal gut flora the good flora because the antibiotics will do that. So do you think that that's one of his problems? He's having a recycle by the antibiotics. He's recycling them through his system, but they're so strong that it's creating a yeast infection. Yes, that's actually very interesting. I think that's exactly what could be going on with him because we don't know which came first, the bacterial or the yeast, and he was um, treated for the yeast infection, and then we entered the the antibiotics into it during that time, too, just in case, and, you know, maybe he had the bacterial infection first. You know, we just don't know because we didn't grow the specimen. You didn't culture it, yes. Culture it, that's the word. We didn't gotcha. culture it in the in the beginning. We we waited a while to do that. Like I said, we went through sort of a process to figure out what was going on with him. Are we, you aware that a, uh, by kissing a bird, because you said he kissed a bird, that a bird can get E. coli bacteria by human saliva? Yes. Yes. It's called they can. what salvia. That can, they can get a uh, S. A. L. I. V. A. bacterial infection. Yes. Yes, they can. And when I kiss my birds, once I, I learned that, yeah. I'm still learning, I, I, I will kiss them on the upper part of the beak, not, not the front. Not, I don't want them getting in my saliva. I'll, and right. I shouldn't do it at all, but I do. I was going to mention and that, I, but that's like, okay. Sort of like <laughs> the upper part of uh, the beak where it's not near the opening of the mouth. I give right. them a quick kiss there. Um, with Tobias, I wouldn't want to kiss him in the front. Anyway, he would probably take my lips off. So, yeah. Um, but yes. Now, you, you know, with you the plucking. You have to be very careful of that. And you talking about the plucking. I'm seeing the plucking. You're talking about stress. Let's talk about the energy surrounding him. And we're going to go on a break for a minute. And we'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Like your business to reach out and invite in our audience. We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. Is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website petliferadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are I love my pets. The new single by Mark Winter. Available in iTunes. Hi, this is Ken Jones from the Prince of Ponds podcast. The frogs are shaking the shakers, the turtles are hitting the slapsticks, and the koi are blowing the trumpets. It's party time here at Prince of Ponds. Out under the swaying palm trees, the pond fairies are kicking up their heels and spinning in delight in the twilight. Here on Pet Life Radio, it's time to celebrate the magic of ponds, waterfalls, fountains, and water gardens at the Prince of Ponds podcast. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We're talking. 
talking today about Tobias, which is an African gray parrot, and he has a fungal yeast infection and uh, bacterial infections. And we've discussed previously that it could be from kissing. And in case you didn't know, folks, kissing your bird can be deadly. So be careful because you could pass to your precious critter a um, bacterial infection called E. coli. Mm-hmm. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk to you about was his plucking, that the energy surrounding Tobias, because he's a very sensitive bird, do you have it so he can look out a window and see activities going on, or is he sequestered in the room with all the other birds? He is in the room with all the other birds, but he can look out the window. Mm -hmm. He he may very well be bored with that, though, Uh, being in the same, I've I've had him in the same spot since he's been here. And that's been Um, how many years? Five and a half. Okay, uh, for it'll be six years. Okay, a lot of African greys are you are aware that get stressed, they naturally pluck their feathers, but it also is they are bored. And the reason you brought that up is a lot of people think birds don't get bored. Well, if you think you get bored looking at your parakeet, they're getting bored looking at you. So what I'd suggest that you do is I'm going to look at his energy in just a minute here, but I suggest that maybe you move him to across the street with some of his friends. When you have a room and you have a parrot, one of the things that's important or with any bird or any animal whatsoever is animals take on the energy that you have. Because if they're connected to you, then their energy is interwoven with your energy. Now, what does this mean? You have an auric field that surrounds your physical body, and your bird has an auric field that surrounds its physical body. So when you go to touch any animal, a bird included, You take your hand and go in at a 45-degree angle so you're not slapping into their energy field. So when you go to touch him, if you'll go in at a 45-degree angle, that is like sliding into somebody's energy field versus going into slapping him on the back as if a human would walk up to you and slap him on the back. Second thing I would do is because he's so smart – I would make sure that he had a lot of activities to see and do and be entertained by. Because remember, he's playing catch up for the first part of his life. He was in there going, okay, I can't even stretch my wings, much less reach my feet to clean them. So now you've given him a love environment. But in addition to the love, he is soaking up and having the opportunity to experience what's around him. And African greys are known as being extremely intelligent quick birds. That's the case. He may be bored, and that may be plucking may be a reason for that. I would ask your avian vet about the antibiotic creating the cycle of the fungus. And truly, for those of you listening out there, folks, if you don't culture a bacteria, it doesn't matter because bacteria comes in so many various strains in today's world that it's important to Instead of giving a generic antibiotic like Batril in dogs or something like that, if you give a specific antibiotic, it goes to the specific bacterial strain. So if you just have a blood culture and it's not, quote, cultured for specific strains, you're basically just shooting and doing an umbrella over everything. Now, sometimes this works, but if you have an ongoing problem like Tobias is having, it would be better for you to spend the money to have the bacteria cultured so that you would know what particular strain it is and then target your specific antibiotic to that specific bacterial strain. That way there's less stress on Tobias's body by taking antibiotics and more specificity in killing the germ. Just like today's cancer research, they're doing DNA cancer research so that when someone has cancer, they're targeting, they're taking their DNA and mixing it up with the chemotherapy and things of that nature and making it individual specific. So instead of doing an umbrella, he's got a bacterial infection, I think you should do it bacterial strain specific so it won't be recurring. Now, not being an avian, I also think that you ought to ask the veterinarian if factually by stripping all the bacteria, which takes both the good and the bad out of his body, is it also creating the fungal infection? I think there is some connection there. Oh, okay. Now, let me see. Let me look at his energy. Let me close my eyes and look at his energy. And what I see, for those of you who have not heard me do this before, is I close my eyes. I ask permission to look at Tobias's energy field. 
and he gives it to me and all of a sudden inside my mind's eye there's his little bird body up on my screen and when I look at the area that he's plucked it's dark slate gray which means the electromagnetics of that area are aberrant and not healthy and I think on the edge of that plucked area he may have a residual little skin inflammation because it's lighting up and when it lights up like that it sort of says that's the edge of the itchy I think if you can use an ointment on a bird I don't know whether they can you know take their beak and rub it if there's a safe ointment uh, my head says that there is an ointment that you could put around the edge of his little defrocking area okay and I really would hold off on the kissing for a while because it could transfer okay. to I, I just won't I won't do it anymore he'll get over it I mean, well, but I mean, I think you can love him another way, but I truly mm-hmm. believe that because at this point he's fragile to germs, that okay. until he gets totally healthy again, I wouldn't wouldn't be doing that for his sake. Okay. Now, you know, you can say in your heart, Tobias, I love you. I'm not kissing you for your health. Please understand. And when you get well again, okay, you can yeah. do that. But right now he needs all his energy to be working on his infections. The okay. second thing is I think that he's got a healthy little energy. I think he's going to be around. I'm here until 32 to 37. And he has a little hot spot above his, on the top of his head just a little bit. And I think that if you can take your finger and just sort of, you know, rub with their little top of his head, I think mm-hmm. that would help. Now, another thing you can do for him, and any animal lover can do this, you can say, because you're so connected to him, Tobias, from the love of my heart, I send you my life force energy to use as you so choose. Now, if you'll sit on your finger, that would even be better because then you have a physical connection. You can sit him on your finger and say, Tobias, from the love in my heart, I send you my life force energy to use as you so choose. Now, for you animal lovers out there, what that means is the love in her heart and love is the purest form and most healing form of energy there is. She is giving the gift of the love that she has for Tobias to Tobias, which supplements his energy. And he, as an individual soul, gets to decide what to do with that energy. And if Tobias wants to get better, he'll use that extra energy as nectar to his healing and heal himself with it. And it will speed up his healing and it will help his healing. Okay? Oh, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Now, another thing you want to do in the room is you want to take out, uh, if you can, put in a room with birds, plants. Plants clean the atmosphere and clean the oxygen and help with the oxygen carbon dioxide release in a room. And you don't want the birds to be eating it, but the plants will help clarify and clean the room out. Okay. Another thing you want to do when you have a room of birds is you want to say, I ask and it is my intent to remove any and all excess, unnecessary, toxic, and unhealthy energy in this room and in these cages and in my birds now, forevermore, and always. I'm going to say that one more time. For those of you who are on the treadmill listening to our podcasts, I ask and it is my intent to remove any and all excess, unnecessary toxic or unhealthy energy in this room, in these cages, or in my birds, now, forevermore, and always, so be it, it is done. Now, what that will do is that'll help remove and soften his memories of bad treatment. Anybody in the room will be the same way, and it'll take away any negative and toxic energies that is affecting his body from an environmental source. Okay? Yeah. So, I hope that answers you. We're getting to the end of our show now and if you have any other questions Lynn if you'll just send it to us back he's, he looks healthy I feel that he's going to be around till he's about 32 to 37 I think this is going to be resolved but I think that one of the issues of the antibiotics is also contributing to the fungal but I think the skin is more dermatological and I think you can get an ointment for it that's what I hear and we really thank you for sharing Tobias's story so we can help hopefully a million birds out there. <laughs> Brad, thank you so much. I just wanted to say real quick, I think you're right about the itchiness, on, uh, especially on the wings where he's biting. So I, that makes sense. When you use now, now listen to me, when you use that prayer to remove everything in the room, you're going to take out a lot of negative energy in there and a lot of stress energy. So that's going to help too. 
We thank you very much for calling in and let me tie up the show today. Thank you so much. You've You're been welcome. a great help. You're welcome. For Tobias and myself. You are more than welcome. And for any of you who have questions out there about your animal, my name is Brent Atwater. I'm an animal medical intuitive. And you can email your questions to Brent at PetLifeRadio.com. If you'd like to know what our show topics are going to be, find us on Facebook, Twitter, or all the other social media sites. And uh, next week, we'll be dealing with pet reincarnation and answering your questions about pet loss. We hope today's show has expanded your awareness about your pet's health and contributed to his health. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter and you'll know more about our shows. You can find our radio programs on podcast and iTunes. And we want to thank Pet Life Radio for allowing us to help heal your heart and help with your pet's health. Until next week, we're Brent and Meg. Looking forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.